younger generation uh, getting into agriculture has become a rarity now so after you know a couple of decades uh, how how is this industry going to thrive because there are no takers for no. agriculture i well i don't think it is true it is true in one level uh, at in one sense but it is not true in another sense but it is not the case that people are leaving farming at the pace that people think they they are leaving because there is nothing else to do also you don't have a government that is working to uh, serve the interests of the people of this country you know it i mean we are seeing this because of this neoliberal ideology about economic policy hello and welcome to news click the farmers have been holding sustained and massive struggles for the past several years the major demands include msps and loan waivers which have been you know denied by the governments for the past several decades to discuss about the importance of msps the demand for a farm wave a farm loan waiver and other alternative policies proposed by the farmers we have with us professor vikas rawal of the jnu welcome sir hello so to begin with uh, the uh, farmers of different organizations have come together to lead lot of struggles in the recent uh, few years so what is the uh, uh, alternative policy you propose or they demand to overcome this sort of crisis which has been impending for the past two three years you see if you look at it the immediate problems that peasantry faces the agrarian crisis that the country is seeing the biggest problem is of incomes that farmers when they work to produce a crop they know how much it is going to cost them to produce the crop but they do not know how much will the produce fetch them whether they will make any profit at all or they will the entire labor will just go in vain there is so much uncertainty about it so this is the biggest problem and the way the neoliberal policies have gone the neoliberal attack on agriculture has been such that input costs have risen very sharply things that were provided by the governments you know seeds fertilizers pesticides electricity these were inputs that were provided at reasonable costs to farmers to make sure that agriculture remains remunerative that has basically stopped you know the government has basically withdrawn the support from agriculture in such a way that farmers do not get very much income from what they produce so there is a problem of low incomes and there is a problem of uncertainty of incomes that has essentially created a situation where on one hand farmers are in distress there is economic distress among farmers two they are not able to you know really invest in agriculture and produce as much as they could be producing so it is something that has also resulted in stagnation of agriculture it has created misery among the peasantry and it has therefore sort of basically become a break on the entire economy so that's the biggest problem that uh, indian agriculture is facing now this doesn't have to be so you know it i mean we are seeing this because of this neoliberal ideology about economic policies and the whole neoliberal paradigm which is uh, determining the nature of economic policies and how in fact farmers have been making those demands they had uh, this glorious struggle that lasted for 13 months against the farm laws which were essentially aimed at uh, increased penetration of agribusiness companies so to prevent that farmers struggled very hard but as part of that they also had other demands one of the biggest demand was of a statutory guarantee of the minimum support price that farmer should get a guarantee that the minimum level of remuneration for the work that they do will is ensured that government will work to ensure that every farmer gets certain minimum income from what they do now the Uh, the conference discussed how this can be made possible what are the alternative ways that this can be done and the the discussion centered around the need to on the one hand bring down cost of production by restoring the system of public su- subsidies and public support which result which if ensured that farmers get 
inputs at reasonable prices and on the other hand creating facilities for storage creating facilities for 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 distribution in the public sector among the uh, in the hands of the cooperatives and so on so that's when necessary if the prices fall these agencies can step in to procure crops and produce from farmers and ensure that their uh, uh, their incomes do not suffer so these alternatives are possible the question is that uh, uh, you know you don't have a government that is working to to serve the interests of the people of this country you don't have a government that's working to serve the interests of peasantry and workers of this country but the serves the interest of the of the big capital so that is a problem but if that political configuration changes the policy alternatives are there there are ways of ensuring that that people have decent incomes there are ways of ensuring that that farm households workers have have decent incomes and that actually that needs to be done so you said that alternatives are possible uh, besides the alternatives the farmers are longing for a minimum support price for their producers for the past several years correct despite the uh, submission of report by the amazon and other commission and the jar commission a few decades back yes uh, the present uh, dispensation is not at all considered granting the uh, the msp for the uh, major uh, crops right so what is the importance of this msp for the survival and the sustainability of the uh, percentage wise you see it's interesting in 1964 jha commission which uh, on the basis of recommendations of which the system of msp was created very categorically said that farmers have to be provided an assurance of a minimum price and that is crucial for agricultural development that farmers and it said that government should have open ended procurement at procurement centers and should create procurement center in far flung areas of the country where the problem of uh, farmers not getting good prices is likely to be most severe so it really gave a blueprint for what needs to be done you see in 4 5 decades since then this has not been done so you see the point is that the understanding that assured remunerative prices are important for farmers has always been there okay swaminathan commission also talked about it so you know it's it's been there in uh, you know report after report of the government now this needs to be done now and this can be done the point is that you need to have the conviction you need to have the conviction that you need you can't have a situation now just think of it this way e- even in other businesses if you have any business i mean you when you set up a business when you invest in a business you have some sense of what you will produce how much you will produce and at what price it would sell now it's incredible that the biggest industry of this country which is agriculture is run on a principle where the entrepreneur who's the farmer doesn't know what they are going to earn that has to stop and that's the reason why farmers are demanding a statutory guarantee of msp and the conference very clearly discussed a path you know that makes this possible and that path goes through reversal of these neoliberal policies these new look at the what is happening to fertilizer in the recent last two years there has been a huge crisis of fertilizers because we have followed neoliberal policies in the fertilizer sector we have liberalized fertilizer pricing deregulated fertilizer pricing uh, promoted the private sector which has not made investment but instead has relied on importing fertilizer but now when you have a situation where the global supplies of fertilizer are short you suddenly have a crisis and this crisis is not just a minor crisis of shortage you are talking of a there is a particular time in the year sowing season when you need large quantities of fertilizer if you don't get large quantities of fertilizer you will have you will have famine in this country you will have a massive problem of exacerbation of hunger and food insecurity it's a strategic sector okay now in that sector you have compromised your sovereignty you have compromised your self sufficiency by privatizing the entire production process and by allowing private companies to import and you now have a situation where they simply don't have enough to import it's not available the prices are too high so even though government is now forced to bring back regulation increase fertilizer subsidy there is just not enough for fertilizer for farmers now this is going to result in a massive problem of production in the country this has been going on for last two years and uh, you know the government is not bothered they are just uh, managing the headlines now the problem is that these are policies that can be reversed 
you know you can create a system where and you we've done it before it can be done again you can have a system in the public sector in the cooperative sector of production of fertilizers that investment needs to be made you need to make sure that the country is self sufficient in supply of fertilizer so that nobody can dictate terms when it's sowing season for you so you know you need to basically reverse the neoliberal policies make sure that farmers have an assurance of getting inputs at reasonable price and at that reasonable price the crops that the price that the minimum price that their crop gets will be remunerative it is only on that basis that farmers can be expected to you know keep investing and keep working and keep producing for the country so that's that can be done so in the recent uh, few years government data itself admits that there are uh, lacks of uh, farmers use so this is uh, you know though it ex- existed even before 1991 the year when the neoliberal policies were implemented in our country what is the role of these policies in increasing or accelerating this kind of a crisis in the farm you see so as i was saying the the problem is because these policies have made agriculture unprofitable which then forces farmers to borrow if you have invested in a crop and you are expecting to sell it at a certain price but when the time comes when you have harvested the crop suddenly the price collapses and you can't even recover the cost that you have invested sometimes the situation is so bad that even the cost of harvesting your produce and taking it to the market is not recovered so you just abandon the crop in the field because it's not worth even harvesting things become so bad now in that situation farmers are forced to borrow and these are times when no bank will lend money you know the rural as part of the whole process of financial liberalization the supply of agri- credit to agriculture has also been been curtailed so you actually have a situation where you end up borrowing either from banks or you default you are unable to repay your bank loans or you borrow from money lenders now all of this has resulted in a huge debt burden on the farmers and it is because of this that the farmers have been demanding for a debt waiver it is and then you know you have the problem of natural calamity suddenly there's a flood or a drought it doesn't rain or a hail storm which results in crop losses now this entire uh, sort of project of crop insurance has been ha- has been handed over to private companies who are reluctant to give compensation to farmers they are only interested in uh, taking large handouts from government in the name of premium but they don't want to give compensation to farmers so that results in a situation where farmers incur losses and end up becoming indebted now it is this huge debt burden which is the biggest cause of farmers committing suicide now there are two solu- two two things that need to be done here one is of course that as farmers have been demanding now for several years that there is a need for a debt waiver that loans have to be waived the the farmers have those who have this huge debt that uh, debt waiver is needed now but that debt waiver is is obviously only an immediate solution it's a bandaid it's a palliative that can be used for some, providing some immediate relief but you also need to deal with the structural issues you need to deal with the problem of why farmers get into indebtedness in the first place why do they become debt trapped in the first place that also needs to be taken care for so you need an immediate relief in the form of a debt waiver and you need to reverse the neoliberal policies to ensure that this problem doesn't keep reoccurring younger generation uh, getting into agriculture has become a rarity now so after you know a couple of decades uh, how how is this industry going to thrive because there are no takers for no, agriculture i well i don't think it is true it is true in one level uh, at in one sense but it is not true in another sense one is that farmers people are not interested in farming because farming is not giving good incomes okay but it is not the case that people are leaving farming at the pace that people think they they are leaving because there is nothing else to do also it is not as if that in non agriculture in other sectors of economy there is a, there are a lot of good jobs uh, uh, being generated you know there also the government is only thinking of making them uh, sell pakodas so you know it is not the case that non agricultural economy is doing very well and people therefore are shifting out of agriculture for better jobs outside even that is not happening so far in fact you have a situation where young people are forced to stay in agriculture in the misery that agriculture offers them 
despite the fact that you know agriculture is not giving incomes agriculture cannot support such a large proportion of our population and and therefore the need is now there is a need for non agricultural economy to grow and for decent jobs to be created outside agriculture so that some of these people can actually go and do other things okay but that can also happen on the basis of incomes being generated in agriculture incomes have to be generated in agriculture so that these households have something to invest outside and uh, do something else outside agriculture but if incomes if agriculture does not generate incomes how will they invest in doing anything how will the diversification happen so you have a, a catch 22 situation created because of this where income agriculture becomes uh, unremunerative and people who are dependent on agriculture cannot go out also and therefore there are more and more people actually dependent on agriculture while agriculture cannot support so much